Hi, I'm David Henderson, and I'm the director for Desire Under the Elms. Uh, several months ago, Charles uh, Fenoff asked me to suggest shows for the season of love, and his criteria were it had to be an American classic and a small cast. And I decided that one of the shows that I really wanted to revisit was Desire Under the Elms. I had auditioned for the show here at Raleigh Little Theater 20-some years ago when they did the show, and I didn't get cast. Uh, but now I wanted to come back and revisit it at, at an older age and see what the play meant to me. And Charles agreed <laughs> to do the show, and I'm really excited about it. It also ha has a long history of being scandalous. In 1924, when they opened the show in Los Angeles, the entire cr uh, company was arrested for doing the play because it was deemed inappropriate or lewd. And uh, I, I find that funny because the, the play itself today seems a little tame, but, uh, but we're very lucky to be able to do this play. It, uh, it stands the test of time. In our version of the show, we are really focusing on the central uh, triangle, Cabot, Abby, and Eben, and reduced the cast to five people. So it allows us to really focus on that central story of the father bringing the new wife home and the new wife seducing and falling in love with the son. And I think what that does is it brings a real urgency and honesty to the show. And in conjunction with Shannon Clark, who is our designer, and uh, Vicki Olson, who's done our costumes, we have an amazing looking show. So even though the show is set in 1850, I think most of the most audiences now will see this story as very resonant today. So we've got a great we've got a great cast for the show. Mark uh, Fielas is Cabot, Heather Strickland is Abby, Brian Yandel is Eben, and then we've got the two brothers, Gus Allen as Simeon, and Aaron Young as Peter. And I think what we get to see and what we'll get to experience is audiences being sucked into the story and see their breath taken away when the, when, the, when the ultimate tragedies are revealed in this play. The structure of the show is uh, really focused on the, the love triangle, the three, Abby, Cabot, and Eben. About five minutes into act two, the play kind of takes a hard right and you start to realize, oh, this play is moving in a direction that could end badly. And there's several scenes in there that are fun to watch, and I mean fun in the sense that you get to see actors really working with great text and great scene partners, and the scenes really pop off the stage. Hi, I'm Heather Strickland. I'm playing Abby in Raleigh Little Theater's Desire Under the Elms. Abby is uh, probably often described as the troublemaker. I think the description actually says she's the one that rocks the foundation of the farm. Uh, so the challenge with Abby was to not play her as a one-dimensional character that just comes in and shakes up a lot of lives. And what I discovered during that process is that there's a lot of heart to Abby. And just like all of us do, her motives are to not have a broken heart. Hi, I'm Brian Yandel. I play Eben Cabot in Raleigh Little Theater's production of Desire Under the Elms by Eugene O'Neill. Uh, my favorite part about playing Eben is the challenge of being so vulnerable on stage, uh, exposing crying horror, uh, so many epic emotions uh, that Eugene O'Neill has given these characters. So thanks for spending a little time with us uh, to learn a little bit about Desire Under the Elms. We open October 10th, so immediately after watching this video, why don't you click and get your tickets to the show. Thanks a lot. We hope you join us. And if you're so inclined, you can join us October 19th for a post-show forum with Dan Ellison, who is an attorney and adjunct professor at Duke University. He's going to talk about the historic controversy with the play. I'll be there. The cast will be there. And we're going to talk about the play in historical context. So if you're inclined, join us for that as well.